Hi, Nicole. Hi. Um, I'm working on a video with Dennis um, solving some homeless issues, and we would like to know how would you involve the county more in solving these problems? Mm -hmm. Well, there would have to be agreement amongst all of the stakeholders that political action is a priority. So hopefully there is a stakeholder coalition or alliance of some sort where the main players are agreeing that they're going to prioritize relationships and coordination and collaboration with the decision makers who obviously have the strings to all the funding that could you know make the decisions to invest in solutions. Well, I know there was a lot of um, players involved in the climate action plan you worked on and how did you coordinate all that? Yeah that's a great question. So we kind of had different loose-knit coalitions. We had the environmental, public health, public transportation organizations that had been working on a climate action plan for many years and we'd done a lot of outreach and education to the community and to elected officials, so kind of parallel tracks. We knew that um, leaders don't lead, they follow, and in order for us to get the elected officials on board with this bold, ambitious climate plan, we were gonna need to show them that the community and their stakeholders that they care about were supportive. So we kind of, on the progressive side, got everyone on the same page, but we also knew that we needed the business community and we needed interests that typically we don't necessarily align with or coordinate or collaborate with. But if we were gonna be successful in sort of pushing the envelope and doing something beyond what had been done before, we were gonna need non-traditional coalitions. So we also did education and outreach to different business trade organizations. And we did that in collaboration with the city of San Diego so that there was kind of a unified voice that was forming, that we were all saying, yes, this is one of the highest public priority issues in the region. This is all about our quality of life. This is all about the future of our kids. This is about ensuring that the next generation can afford to live here and um, is enjoying all the benefits that we have. And so when you kind of frame things in a unified longer term vision, it's easy to kind of, not easy, that's um, an exaggeration, <laughs> um, it's easier to find aligned interests. And so once we did that, then we were able to kind of become one um, larger coalition. Again, very loose-knit, just very tactical for this one purpose, but we all kind of went to the elected officials and said, we're on the same page. We believe that you should prioritize this issue, and you know whether you, you know you're Democrat or Republican, it doesn't matter. We want to make sure this moves forward, so let's act act in a unified fashion. Nicole, do you think it would be effective for somebody like me to go um, in front of the county board and voice my opinion on what they should do? Would that be helpful? Yeah, in my experience, I've worked for three different elected officials now, so I spent eight years at City Hall, sort of watching how public policy is made, and yes, certain. You know, you can be an individual voice that's promoting an issue, but you're going to have a lot more impact mm -hmm. if you're part of a larger coalition, if there are a lot of different voices. Um, because there are so many competing priorities for the elected officials. And so, you know, what rises to the top are when you have kind of a majority of the community agreeing that this is where we need to go, this is what we need to prioritize, this is what we need to fund. Mm -hmm. So, yes, you know, I always don't want to discourage engagement or involvement ever. And, you know, it's always good for the public to believe they have a voice at any local government um, institution. But to actually, you know, get your issue across the finish line to make a difference, it's best to be part of an organization and then have that organization be part of a coalition and have that coalition, you know, jointly lobbying and advocating for the same outcome. Mm, I see. So, Nicole, what does lobbying look like? Well, it comes in different forms and fashions. Sometimes it is just an individual. Sometimes it's just a family or a neighborhood. But for, in this case, if you actually were part of an alliance or a coalition of some sort, mm -hmm. You would basically identify who you would want to represent different interests in a meeting with an elected official. Um, oftentimes people hire a official lobbyist, someone who's actually registered to um, advocate before elected officials, but you don't need that. You don't need to hire someone specifically. It is powerful as well when you bring people into a meeting with an elected official who are actually experiencing the problem, who can actually say to this person, here's my story. Here's why it matters to me. And I'm backed up by these community-based organizations that have kind of prominence in the community. So you kind of get kind of the, um, or the individual who's representing an organization, and you get the individuals themselves. And it kind of, you can make a um, kind of powerful case when you're united in that way. And usually you practice, you organize, you know, okay, how are we going to present this to the elected official, to, to, why, to where they care, yeah. what's the angle this 
this elected official cares about the most. You know, you do a lot of um, preparing and planning and research, exactly, um, to lobby. And, and I should s say that lobbying takes the form of, you know, behind the scenes in meetings and publicly in mm -hmm. hearings. And uh, in both of those cases, you're usually organized and prepared and planning about how you're going to be most effective. To get a behind the scenes meeting, you'd be surprised when a, uh, an individual who is a constituent of an elected official requests a meeting. It's either you'll get it with the elected official themselves, usually if, you know, you're of higher prominence or they kind of know you're, mm -hmm. you they know who you as an individual are, or if you're representing an organization that they know. Um, but if not, then oftentimes you can get a meeting with a staff member. So that's also effective, as to, and that's why they have staff, that, at least at the city of San Diego, at the bigger cities, um, and the county of San Diego. So there is that opportunity. Um, there's also, again, people who are literally paid to get meetings for individuals or um, causes. So there's paid lobbyists that can make sure that you get elect a meeting with an elected official themselves. Um, so there's a variety of ways to get meetings, but at the heart of it, it's about relationships. And that's kind of th what the base of politics is. It's about, okay, how am I going to leverage the, the alliances and the relationships that I have or that my partners have or that my coalition members have so we get that face-to-face -face meeting with that elected official. And, you know, it's not just the elected official, it's also the staff, not just for the elected official, but for the bureaucracy, for the institution itself. That's also important. Because again, then what happens is that a staff member or an elected official might call the city manager or the county executive officer and say, I'm, I would like to prioritize this issue. You know, where does this fall on your priority list, this issue? Or what are your thoughts? This group presented this solution. I'm interested. I'm intrigued. What are your thoughts? And so oftentimes you want to have them already knowing that call might come. And, you know, why you've already persuaded them. That's also a good solution. So it's a multifaceted, multi-pronged approach. It takes a lot of work. But that's how you move the needle. That's how you actually get issues across the finish line. I mean, politics, as I tell literally everybody, it's not for the faint of heart. <laughs> it's soul crushing, it's heartbreaking, you lose a lot of the time, or it just, if you win, it takes a long time, you have to chip away at it, you get incremental progress, you know, you don't necessarily get everything you want immediately. Um, but if you are, again, as an individual or a group are committed to a long-term vision and you remain focused and persistent, that this is the outcome, you're not going to give up until you achieve that outcome, in my experience. And, you know, I think the Climate Action Plan is a good example. It will happen. Yeah. What's also important, as I mentioned earlier, is that leaders don't lead, they follow. So you do really want to also spend time not only building relationships with the elected officials and with staff members, but also with the community. Because electives don't go, like to go too far out mm -hmm. from where they believe the community is. So if you've sort of built a base and you've demonstrated like through rallies or public hearings, you've brought a lot of people um, to the process, or you've, you know, you've gotten a lot of people to write letters or emails or make phone calls, that makes the elected official feel more comfortable and confident that they're doing what their constituents want them to do, that they're in alignment with the community. So it's kind of, you know, you want to make the individual pitch to those decision makers, but also you want to show them that it's not... It's not just you as an individual, it's not just our group, it's the broader public sure. that this is an issue of high public priority. The other key element to me is the media. The media can be your best friend or they can, you know, unfortunately move your issue down the priority list. If they're not prioritizing it as an issue that they're covering, it's mm -hmm. harder for the elected official to believe the community cares. So it's also critically important in working with, again, your partners and allies is not, it's not one person that has to do all this work. But you want to make sure the media is your friend and agrees that this is worthy of um, coverage. And hopefully the more coverage you get, again, it's telling elected official, I'm going to have to address this. Mm -hmm. If I'm going out for a re-election, if I'm going out into the community for a coffee or a public meeting, I'm probably going to hear about this issue. So I better have an answer. I better have a solution. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of, again, all these different um, forces coming together so that it, you know, your, the issue that you want to get to the highest, um, you know, the highest yeah. priority of the elected official, um, they're hearing about it from many different ways. In fact, the story I always tell about the Climate Action Plan is that when I was working for um, Todd Gloria, who was a council member who became the interim mayor, he always said to me that, yes, you and your organization and the environmental organizations hadn't been talking to me about climate change and why it was such an important priority. 
Um, but what I really saw in the community was that I would go to my community coffees and people would ask me what I'm doing about climate change. Mm -hmm. So that to him demonstrated that this issue was reverberating in the broader public and it wasn't just a narrow interest group that was interested. And that helped him feel like emboldened and empowered to take, you know, an aggressive, ambitious action. Mm -hmm. So I think that's probably true for any issue that you're working on. Yeah. Make sure that whatever you're doing is planned and is part of a larger strategy. That is not just an ad hoc decision mm -hmm. like, oh, we're just going to go protest at the foot of the county administration building or at City Hall without also having a bigger, larger coordinated strategy around. And we have these organizations and interest groups also lobbying. Mm -hmm. You know, that there's kind of, again, a multifaceted effort happening that's part of a larger um, strategic vision. Mm -hmm. Because it's not just one action or activity that's going to move the needle. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. many players coming at this issue from many different um, places and different interests kind of elevating the issue to where change happens. So yes, you can do, you know, you can say, oh, I'm just going to do a demonstration. I'm just going to do a rally. I don't feel the need to partner with any stakeholders or organizations um, or build relationships with elected officials. I'm just going to take a stand. Mm -hmm. That's okay, but you probably aren't going to be as effective or make the difference you seek without also, you know, having a larger strategic plan in place. And it could backfire too. <laughs> and what you also want to be careful about with elected officials is that if you haven't, if they don't feel the issue has the support of the community, especially the, or even the solution that you're promoting mm -hmm. doesn't have the support of the community, then there's almost nothing you can do to change their mind if you don't also have the backing of a lot of prominent um, stakeholders and as individuals or community um, organizations. So mm -hmm. to me, it's always best to figure out, okay, how can I have the greatest impact in the shortest amount of time? And sometimes that means doing legwork mm -hmm. and, you know, building those relationships with um, a variety of players versus just kind of trying something and hoping it works mm -hmm. or upsetting an elected official, mm -hmm. embarrassing them, humiliating them. In my opinion, that's you know, not usually an effective strategy and it pushes them farther away mm -hmm. and it will take you that much longer to bring them back in yeah. to want to partner with you to find a solution. You could play a role in convening some of these stakeholders mm -hmm. to play um, a part in a, you know, again, you can have a loose-knit coalition. You don't have ev you don't have to have everyone agreeing to yeah. um, every facet of your potential campaign. But if at least you get an idea of where people are at and what um, kind of alignment there is on a solution, and then an agreement on strategies to get there, which could include organizing and mobilizing and having actions in the street combined with behind the scenes and formal public you know, and private lobbying, um, then you know, that to me is when you're going to kind of you know, hit the, the um, solution in the right place. How do you find out what the people think? Mm -hmm. about, like about homeless associates. I, yeah. So in, in my experience, there are organizations that track this, oh, okay. you know, organizations that are, you know, feeling the pulse of the community yeah. on these kind of higher profile, public profile issues anyhow. Yeah. So they already have a sense of where the public is at. Yeah. Um, and if maybe elected officials have weighed in about where they stand when elected officials are running for office, yeah. oftentimes they're asked about yeah. many of these high profile issues. So you'll already know kind of what what they're thinking, usually what the elected official thinking is what the public's thinking. Yeah. Because again, they don't like to go too far out. So it wasn't mentioned in the presidential race at all. Oh that. well, yeah. <laughs> on a national scale, right? Yeah. But are we? Fo we are, I believe we're focused on local solutions, and I'm yeah. a big believer that change happens from the ground up. Yeah. So we will have the most success locally. Mm -hmm. um, but so to me, if you would convene a meeting with some of these local organizations that are working on these issues, mm -hmm. you know, they might be mostly focused on service. Um, providing services yeah. for certain populations, and that's fine, but it, you know, there could be an opportunity to say to them, well, let's, can we combine service with advocacy? Mm. And you know, I'd, like to be, I'd like to help create an opportunity to yeah. you know, do that political action. And then you'd find out from them, like this is where we think the public is. Mm. So, and this is what we're willing to do, help you move that political needle yeah. without yeah. them having to fully commit 100% all of their resources or time yeah. or organizational capacity. You're very informative. <laughs> yes. Like yeah. Well, this is what I do for a living. <laughs> yeah. I better have learned by now. You're going to run for office next year. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hmm. No, probably not. But I'm always going to be an advocate. Yeah. Yeah. Always yeah. pushing the needle to make the community a better place to live. All right. That's a perfect spot to wrap up. Good. Yes. All right. Thank you. <laughs>